The Go build system is known for its efficiency and continuous improvements. Go 1.24 introduces a significant enhancement with Go Tool Directive, addressing how Go dev tools are managed. You see, previously, managing dev tools such as linters or code generators or other build utilities often required manual installation steps using Go install or your package manager, which was outside of your dependencies graph, which often led to different version inconsistencies. I've seen it many times when two developers generate different Go code by using the same command, only because the versions of this tool are different. For example, John uses Mockery to generate mocks for shared code base, but his version is 2.2, while David has Mockery 2.3. Sometimes you might end up with completely different file or just annoying git conflicts. Let's pick some dev tool. The popular example would be OIP code generator. I used it on the videos before, so basically generating the Go code from our O open API schema. So uh, to install it, we would usually do on our host machine something like go install. You can pick obviously the version. Let's go with the latest, right? And the difference with Go tool is that instead of the go install, we would do our normal go get with the dash tool argument. So the tool has been added to our project with the version 2.4.1, and we can verify it by listing our go mod file. So we can do that go mod, right? And the tool will be somewhere here, uh, and the version will be listed. I believe inside of the require somewhere here, right? So this one, right? So now all users of our software kind of know what dev tools this project is using and know the exact version and they don't need to install this manually, which I'll show in a moment. First of all, we can see what tools do we have in our project by just listing them. That would be go tool. You will see quite few here because it also lists the default Go tools like that and others. So you can also kind of know that, that they are there on your host machine, as well as our OIP code gen. Now, OIP code gen is an executable, and I don't have it installed globally on my host machine, as you can see, but because it's there in the Go project, we can call it as executable using Go tool, and then the name of it, right? Right, you need to specify the path to the open API file, which kind of converse, confirms that the executable works. As you probably noticed, I'm not sure, the first run is a little bit slow because of what Go build system does, it compiles this uh, binary for the first time. The consecutive calls are much faster. Let's also confirm the version, maybe if it's possible, maybe dash dash. Awesome. And you see what's cool that probably OIP code gen is installed on your host machine with a different version, but our project we specify requires 2.4.1 or something else that we agreed on. And maybe it's not installed at all. So having got tool specific executable is really helpful in this case. And you can add as many dependencies as you like to your project by using, as you remember, go get dash tool. Right? So it could be, let's say, mockery, golang CI lint, others like protasy generators and so forth. While it's not a really huge deal, I find it a little bit verbose to always type your tool and then the tool name to execute your command, but I guess it's not a big issue. But let's actually call it for real now and uh, execute our generation. I believe it's the file here. All right, that's because we probably need to specify the configuration that we have. All right, so it worked. This one is just a warning. We saw it in the previous video. Cool. So. A little bit about the verbosity of this command. Uh, it, it actually doesn't matter if you use go generate. So let's see how we can use that. All right, so let's copy our command from here and open our main.go file, for example. At the moment, it doesn't utilize the go generate annotation, but we can add, add it because it's really helpful for things like mock generations, code generators, so generate, and our command here. Um, What's interesting that previously you would basically type OIP code gen simply here, assuming that OIP code gen is installed on our host machine, 
which often isn't and we don't know which version but we can just type go to here which is really helpful for example let's confirm that it works so we can remove the right the generated file go go generate again and let's see if it's there right so yeah the file is generated again what's cool about that is that you can clone any project any open source project or project of your company and don't install these tools individually manually obviously it only works for godev tools so the tools that are written in go that can be installed with go install command but your project may require other tools that are written in different languages that you can't use go install so you have to i don't know use your package manager or use another installation it's actually unfortunate but from my experience i can tell that majority of go dev tools are actually been written in go so there yeah, shouldn't be a problem and if there's any tool missing yeah you just install the old way nothing wrong with that there is another nice undocumented feature i would say is that you can specify which go mod file to use when working with tools that could be helpful for example when you don't want to mix your dependencies right because there could be some version conflicts so you can use go tool and then mod file mod file equal let's say it's tools.mod and yeah kind of do our what was that oap code gen right obviously uh, in my case this file doesn't exist but you can create it put only the tools there and have your code dependencies in your regular go.mod file and kind of using this way you can separate these two in a way we can say that go now has npm run or it's similar not the same obviously but it's much improved way to manage your tool dependencies that's it for today sweet and short let me know how you use go tool have you encountered any issues with that don't forget to subscribe peace